there are maybe some instances where you're inviting a customer to do something that's experiential and emotional that's not digital, but it's the exception. Nowadays, it's mostly digital. And if it's going to be digital, you better be thinking about the most cutting edge digital tools because that's what your customers are thinking and they're comfortable with them. And they're going to think it's weird if you don't, if you don't lean into this concept of the metaverse, if you don't lean into the concept of digital asset ownership. And in particular right now, if you're not thinking about what AI could do for you, you're not taking advantage of all the tools to go emotional and uh, experiential over just transactional. Welcome to Innovation Talks. Join us weekly as we discuss with distinguished industry guests how to refine and improve corporate innovation and new product development. Hosted by Paul Heller, Sophion Chief Evangelist. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the show. Hope you're all having a great week and you're enjoying your fall period wherever you happen to be in the world. We've got a really fun episode today. We've got two people. We could spend an episode on each one of them of their backgrounds, but what they're doing together now, what the, their new venture is going to be, is really exciting. But uh, let me introduce you to two people. Adam Brotman and Andy Sack. Now, Andy is a seasoned tech entrepreneur and venture capitalist, and he recently spent more than seven years advising Satya Nadella. How about that? And if that's a name you don't know, Satya is the chairman and CEO of Microsoft. So talk about innovation and new products, and that's exactly where Andy was. And Adam, also incredible background, former chief digital officer at Starbucks. And he was responsible for building the brand's Odyssey loyalty platform. So welcome to the show, Adam and Andy. Hey, Paul. Thanks, Thanks for having Paul. us. Great. And where are you calling from, Adam? You can go first. Okay. I'm currently in Santa Barbara, California. Okay. Andy? And I'm in Seattle, Washington. Seattle, Washington. And uh, I think it'd be great first to start about your background. And Adam, you can go first. You're involved in building that that platform, which is amazing where it's gone and the technologies in it. And I mean, the transformational nature of it. How did you even get started with that? Well, I was. it started actually, if you go all the way back to when I was chief digital officer at Starbucks, we as a team and, and there are a lot of different teams involved but we we built the starbucks loyalty program and mobile app and mobile order and pay program and as part of that work over time we learned a lot about digital connections with customers and the importance of storytelling and so after i left starbucks in 2018 i went to j crew for a stint and then ended up back in seattle and found my way to being in business with my friend Andy at Forum 3. And at Forum 3, we were tackling some of the most state-of-the-art converging tech as it, as it related to brands. And our we had a number of clients, but one of our best and favorite clients was Starbucks, my old employer. Uh, and yeah. they hired Forum 3 and our company to help them with their some of their innovation and digital strategies, including their Web3 strategy, which was something that we... Uh, tackled with them and it led to the launch of odyssey as you put it and odyssey mm -hmm. is a is a loyalty extension is a part of their starbucks loyalty program but it involves web3 it involves storytelling it involves community and that's a big part of our vision that we'll talk about i'm sure in a minute but that was that's how we ended up at forum three helping starbucks with the odyssey program yeah. You mentioned Forum 3. We are going to spend a lot of time talking about Forum 3. So if, if somebody's wondering what's Forum 3, just hang on because we'll get there in a minute. But what kind of challenges did you have? Were there cultural challenges? It sounds to me, if I got it right, that this is more with Forum 3 working with Starbucks. So that's the traditional uh, company like Starbucks go out and open innovation and get somebody outside to help build innov an innovative platform. Do I have that right? Yeah, I mean, yes. Although they had Starbucks, as as they have for years, has really strong internal teams, including a really world class loyalty team. Howard Schultz, their CEO, original CEO, if you will, came back for his third stint as CEO of the company. When he came back, we were fortunate enough to be brought in by uh, Howard and his sort of reconstituted leadership team to help them. So we, because of the background I had with the company. 
involved, especially in areas of digital transformation and innovation, we were brought in to help complement their internal teams to go launch an innovative extension to their loyalty program. Right, right, right. Well, Andy, let's give you a moment to uh, to introduce yourself, uh, a little bit about your background. I mean, I, I'm curious how you even got to that position of being able to advise Microsoft at that at that top level of the company. And uh, it was all about new product innovation, digital transformation, of which Microsoft is, I mean, just watch what they've been doing lately. It's incredible. So can you tell us about that experience, how you got there, your background even before that? Sure. I'm originally from the East Coast. I grew up outside of Boston and really have been a career technologist. I graduated from business school and started a comp- an internet company in 1995. And so during the 90s, I had three companies that I was lucky enough to sell and and then switched sides and became a venture capitalist in Seattle. And somewhere along the line in like 2014, um, I happened to meet Satya Nadella at a cocktail party in in the Seattle area, and he asked asked me to come in for a meeting. We had a good conversation at the party uh, that led to ultimately myself and another b- business person engaging with uh, Microsoft while Satya was head of what what is called CNE Cloud and Enterprise at Microsoft. So just prior to him becoming CEO, mm-hmm. and then. Of course, he became CEO. There was a post Steve Ballmer. There was a selection process, and he was chosen clearly wisely by the board. Yes, and yeah. and he's had an amazing run. So for the first five years, we were a a project out of the office of the CEO, and we focused on digital transformation within Microsoft. So Microsoft does it has an amazing bundle. It has an amazing history. It's got amazing large scale products. But one of the things that they had struggled with some is building is new product introductions and new product development. Yeah. And that was the area that we focused on. Incredible. I mean, you look at the success of the cloud for them. You look at the success of Office 365, and it's got a lot of new apps in it. I mean, the Teams platform, I it's in, in the business world, which is where I spend my time with large companies, it's the de facto standard. So it's tough. really amazing. I, it's it's rare that companies are able to sort of reinvent themselves and yeah. and sort of sus- maintain, fight against the innovators dilemma. And really, I mean, credit to Microsoft generally, to Bill, to Bill Gates, Steve Ballmer, and now Satch has just, just done a fantastic job at yeah. reinvigorating the company. And now their their deal with OpenAI and what that's been able to do, I think it's like a whole new day at Microsoft. So yeah, yeah. it's pretty amazing. Yeah, you, you, you both have been in some great, great places, great experiences, but you created something new called Form 3. And it, it mentions that you have your lifelong friends with a shared vision. So before we talk about Form 3, I have to ask, what's the vision? <laughs> <laughs> I think what Andy and I have always had in common from a business perspective is that we, uh, we love the idea of embracing whatever the most emerging cutting edge technologies are in order to help brands tell their story and connect with their customers. So it's really a vision for an approach that We've, we, whether you call it web one, web two, web three, the era of AI and metaverse and uh, blockchain, like regardless of what era you're in, the playbook is, is fairly similar. It involves embr- embracing and navigating these new technologies, but they're just tools. It's, they're tools and they're a means to an end. It's the end that's the same vision all along, which is how do you use the magic of technology to to tell your story to create experiences to allow for consumers and customers to have a tighter relationship with the brand so that's been true for 25 years that andy and i have been in business separately and now together we've never seen anything to be honest like this new generative ai technology it's literally out of a science fiction movie in some respects and we're learning. It's only been really, it's really only really been something we focused on for the last year. 
and we're deep into into thinking about it. And that's why we're excited about what Forum 3 is doing now that it's focusing on generative AI for consumer brands. I think it's really cool. And and you're right. I mean, you want to pack a room at a conference, just talk about AI right now, generative AI, the room packs, it's instant sellout. It is a hot topic. You guys are in a, a great place, a right place at the right time. What I really like is the to focus on the brand side of it. You've obviously got a lot of experience with brands. So tell us about Form 3 and, and what you're doing there, what your, what your focus is. Yeah, our latest focus is, is this uh, platform we call Hive 3. And so Hive 3 is a place where brands and AI creators can come together to help brands tell their story, engage with their customers, uh, and we do it in sort of a fun, gamified way. So Hive 3 is a place where we run a series of competitions or challenges where our community of AI creators or a brand's community uh, in the future will be able to come to our platform using generative AI tools and essentially respond to a design brief in a design competition that helps the brands create either ads or sizzle reels or both. So it really allows it's a fun way for both the ai creators and brands to get the most out of this generative ai technology which really democratizes the ability for almost anybody to be able to be a creative professional in some senses it's a it's a different type of creative professional but it's really amazing how ai generative ai allows kind of anybody to become a creator yeah. And there are some blockbuster companies associated with brand. You go to a Procter & Gamble or, or Unilever or there are companies that figured out brands, a PepsiCo, brands a long time ago. Is there When you use the word brands, is there any type of brands that's better off focused on this or any brand you can think of? Well, Andy, jump in anytime. But the, what I'd say is we're, we're recording this podcast just a few days before we're going to make an announcement, which I know will have come out by the time people hear this, yeah. which is mm -hmm. we are announcing our first big customer on our Hive 3 platform, which is Crumble Cookies. And Crumble oh, Cookies, nice. many people are familiar with them. They're, a, they're sort of an amazing, successful phenomenon right now. I think they have over 900 stores across the U.S. And they're a perfect example of the type of consumer brand we're talking about. So this is a brand that every week tells a new story around its, its lineup of cookies. And, but then beyond that, at a macro level, they, they have these, these fresh ingredients and this kind of a fun, delicious setup for how they, how they present themselves with their iconic pink box and their, their thick, amazing cookies. And so they're, it, they are a consumer brand that, has kind of been built on the storytelling of how they present their product, right? It's an experience to go in there and sort of see the cookies and buy them and eat them, but it's also kind of an experience to learn what the new, what that next week's lineup is of cookies. And so this is a great opportunity for them to not just create their own ads on their own, but actually tap into AI creators and see what the AI creators would come up with against a brief. And so it's, it's fun to have customers co-create and tell the story of a brand because customers can tell the story of a brand oftentimes better than the brand can themselves. And yeah. so how do you sort of tap into that? We think it's kind of fun and so does Crumble to sort of experiment with, well, what if you could have everyday consumers and customers telling that story using these AI creative tools that can make images, they can make sizzle reels and videos and and so they're a good example of the kind of brand we're talking about. I mean, any brand, any consumer brand, whether it be, like you said, a, a CPG brand down the grocery aisle, a food service restaurant brand, a clothing and apparel brand, like they all, they all are using different ways of connecting with their customers by telling a story. And that's really what they're their marketing, their advertising, and their loyalty programs are all about. So yeah. that, those are the kind of brands we're, we're we think are the best fit for high three ones that really want to tell a story and connect with their customers in new ways. Let me, let me add to what Adam was saying, which is that the, the brands that you mentioned, Paul, whether it be Clorox or Procter and Gamble back in the day, they figured out consumer marketing really based on the media that was available at that time, which was really television. I mean, it went from television to direct mail, right? Those were the, and I think brands today have a more, 
complex landscape that's really been driven by changes in technology. And you're really seeing the rise of, of social media and influencer marketing and how the media landscape and the media landscape totally changed the way in which news is consumed and it's changed the way in which consumers buy from companies. And those, yeah. those brands that are trying to figure that out are a new type of brand and it's a new type of marketing yeah. um, for us. That typically is not the Clorox or the Procter and Gamble. Yeah. The, the brands that we're targeting tend to be more sort of fast growing, mid sized to smaller, more engaged in social. And again, the, the industries would be food and food, beverage, alcohol, those kinds of things. And we have a specific focus on, on the Gen Z consumer because yeah. it's really the Gen Z consumer where AI in particular you take social media market now you add in AI and both all the exciting aspects of it as well as all the so the concerning aspects it's really going to play out with the Gen Z consumer really interesting and i wonder you got me thinking okay what's going to happen to these old I don't want to word stodgy because that's definitely not the right word for some of them, but some of them, it is the right word, but these older brands, right. Been around for, for 50 years, right. They're going to be, I guess they'll just continue the way they are, but you're right. All the excitement is in these new disruptive transformational products that are coming out. Yeah. I have, I have two comments about that, which is, is that on some level, AI makes every company old and stodgy. We have no <laughs> idea yeah. the speed of that, of the, that it, it's advancing is is just unparalleled in in my career in my yeah. lifetime and right. i think everybody's lifetime so that makes everybody old and stodgy yeah and, re and requires everyone to have a different approach and that's really where adam and i there's one aspect of the we are actually working on a book with harvard business review specifically on this topic which is really sort of the the consumer behavior change coming out of the pandemic coupled with the changing convergent landscape of technologies of AI, Web3, and Metaverse. So, and what I will say is, yes, every company is going to be, is can, on some level going to be stodgy when compared to the change of yeah. AI. When you mentioned the large companies, there are, I mean, Starbucks has done a great job with Starbucks Odyssey. I mean, yeah. they, they engaged with us, they engaged with other people in order to make Odyssey happen. There are other companies that are, large companies that you would might think would be slow and stodgy but have caught in the the desire to try to experiment yeah. and coca-cola heinz are to name two balenciaga i mean they've all done sort of small experiments with ai and i think you'll see that continue i think it's incumbent on all of them to under un, undertake that and it's an area where adam and i really focus which is both the change in the marketing as well as the digital transformation that's organizationally that's required to basically experiment and learn from those experiments to to uh, achieve success. Yeah. I think that's well said Andy. I think the uh, there's opportunity for any brand out there to uh, to reinvent it itself in the new technologies and I know there's a lot of interest in it. So I think that's a fair point, right? Older brands aren't necessarily stodgy brands if they if they get on board here, but this is this is really really I think the new consumers, the Gen Z, all the things you talked about makes makes a lot of sense. What about privacy? I mean, I, I almost can't have a, 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 a Gen AI discussion without considering that aspect of it. Is that something that really even matters at the brand level or or is that more in the IP side? I mean, it depends on what you mean by privacy, but I can give you an example where it does matter. I mean, I think a lot of brands are cautious as they should be about what yeah. what data they put into the generative AI tool in order to get answers or creativity out of it. So there's a lot of talk about whether or not they create their own sort of instances of these models so that they don't, they're not giving that data to a third party, including these big frontier models, or they're making sure that they're using some sort of enterprise version of one of these frontier LLM models so that, yeah. so that they're not, there's in theory no way that that data is going to get out. Although right. I think it's so new and pretty scary. Think about taking all of this private data and sort of giving it to a third party. Correct. 
we've seen what's happened with some of these big social media companies when that's happened in the past and privacy has been violated. So it's, I think everybody is and should be a little cautious right now. And that's part of yeah. what, part of what Andy and I are doing is we're learning and watching and sort of seeing what's going on and trying to help brands embrace, but also navigate carefully what's going on with AI so they can, so that they can embrace it in a responsible manner. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you if you think about a lot of companies are trying to develop their own policies with respect to what can be open, what can be in, what can be out. Unfortunately, some have had to stop all access to generative AI tools until they they get mm-hmm. their procedures in in place and then it's just but but I think people are figuring that out, right? So it it's like been a wild ride in just very short time from explosive growth to let's let's constrain it to let's figure it out to let's now make it mainstream that that cycle which normally takes years for a, a technology is just taking months for 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 generative ai it's fascinating yeah i mean you've got that's right it's happening like andy said earlier it's happening at breakneck speed where you've got you know, of course, you've got Microsoft's partnership with OpenAI. You've got Meta with their Llama open source model or semi open source models. Google and Amazon are both very involved with AI, where you've got rumors are that Google's going to come out with an incredible frontier LLM model of their own this fall. So it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a race and it's ha- releases and capabilities are happening really fast. And so to your point about if you're a company, thinking about what to do here, you, it's, it, I can imagine there's a lot of companies that have a little bit of a deer in a headlights look, which is like, they don't want to go too fast because they can make a mistake and they need to be careful, but they also don't want to get left behind. And you could just get really left behind really quickly right now, given the pace yeah. of this. So I think it's just, you got to surf it and you got to thread that needle and every company has got to figure out that means for themselves. Yeah. Well said. Adam, you've spoken about emotional over transactional. Uh, you've written and spoken about that. Is there going to be, what shift do you see happening and how might AI uh, play in that? Yeah, well, I mean, Andy and I talk a lot about this idea and we're writing about it now in this book about this idea of how brands need to understand that the new consumer, which is like, this Gen Z millennial consumer in particular that are absolutely comfortable in a native way with these emerging technologies, including AI, by the way. So they're very comfortable with it. And they come from a perspective where they are, they have no problem having a digital relationship with their friends, with their brands. Like it's just digital, physical inter is interchangeable to them. So you as a brand have to understand that if you're just being transactional with your customer, particularly nowadays, you're going to feel stale and get left behind. So you have to create experiences and tell stories and invite your customers to feel like they are part of your brand, usually through experiences that allows them to have an emotional connection with you. So experiences, emotional connection is important. So what that means is, you should be using every tool at your disposal to do storytelling, participation, co-creation and community, right? Even gamification on some level, gamification in, in the idea of having fun and allowing your customers to win at things and create things with you. All of those things create experiences and create emotional connections. And that's really important because you can't get rid of the transactional. I'm gonna give you money, you're gonna give me a product or service. I might earn points and I can redeem those points for discounts. Like those are all linear transactional aspects yep, of a, right. a customer brand relationship. There, you need to still have those. You can't have a, a successful company without those linear transactional elements. But if you're not thinking all the time as a brand, in our opinion, about, wait a minute, how do I get closer emotionally to the customer? How do I create experiences and let them co-create? And yeah, today that's all happening through technology. I mean, there are maybe some instances where you're inviting a customer to do something that's experiential and emotional, that's not digital, but it's the exception. Nowadays, it's mostly digital. And if it's going to be digital, you better be thinking about the most cutting edge digital tools because that's what your customers are thinking and they're comfortable with them and they're going to think it's weird if you don't 
if you don't lean into this concept of the metaverse, if you don't lean into the concept of digital asset ownership, and in particular right now, if you're not thinking about what AI could do for you, you're not taking advantage of all the tools to go emotional and uh, experiential over just transactional. Yeah, when you you think about that, I mean, I'm thinking about the tools that consumers use to express their their feelings, right? It used to be, you just tell the people you lived on the street with. Then it got to, okay, I could write a few words in a social media app. Then it got to, well, let me just post a meme, right? That, that expresses what I think about something. It's just been really moving fast for the, the, uh, the type of people who are in that space, They how they communicate, how they they express their satisfaction and dissatisfaction with a product that they're using, right? Is that is that part of this as well? Yeah, definitely. There's no question that social media is, I think, as, as important as ever. I mean, as Andy said earlier, like the role of influencers, and when we talk about influencers, they're mostly influencers on YouTube and TikTok and Instagram, right? And the like. So, I mean, social media is the platform of influencers and memes both right so memification yeah. and influencers have never been more important so that means social yeah. media is super important which means the consumer sharing their thought or their passion for a brand or their dislike of a brand on social media yeah. it's still as impactful as ever but i'd say that something new is happening where the gen z consumer and, and millennials are becoming able to create in ways that it's not, it's no longer just a, a text post with a hashtag or an right. image or just some video they captured. It's, they now can write software. They can create their own experiences. They can make high fidelity, high production digital videos and share them on TikTok. Yeah. And like all of a sudden, the cre this creator, this consumer creator, citizen creator, if you will, it's different. It's, it's still social media with, posting something about your experience or your feelings about a brand, but it's just at a whole other level and it's, it's that much more powerful. So that's the things that we're thinking about and talking about at forum three in terms of, and at hive three about like, how do you as a brand see what's out there and tap into that and be a part of that and experiment with that. I'll just add, I'll add to that, which is, is that this move from transactional to emotional, which really I think Starbucks, Starbucks embraced with odyssey, I think they recognize, as we do, that, as I mentioned before, as media changes, so does marketing. And so if you think about where we were, I don't know, 20, 20 years ago, it was all about brands marketing to yeah. consumers. And as social media has evolved and the media has evolved, really the consumer of today is doesn't want to be marketed to, doesn't want to no. be sold to. Everyone no. is super, like, we're quick to... We're, we're quick to fast forward off of ads. We're quick to jump off. And there's a lot of distrust. The ones that are successful is, are much more about the ones where it, this says something about me or I want it to say something about me. And they're both invited to participate and engage with brands. But it's all it's not about marketing, too. It's about serving up something that's, that is either playful or enjoyable to the individual consumer, and that's yeah. that's really what that's really what we're doing with Hive Three, and and I think brands that are successful are sort of recognize that shift, and and that's what it means to move from transactional to emotional. Yeah, and there's there's examples of what Andy just said that are really interesting because they're not. It not only is it not just brands marketing to the customer. Sometimes it's not even the brands doing anything on their own, but sometimes being smart about letting something play out. So a good example of that is the Grimace Shake TikTok phenomenon that just happened recently, right? You get in, it, it, it touches on everything Andy just said. It's, it's a meme, it's social media. It's, it is this particularly Gen Z generation, I think was mostly engaged in it, that we're like creating these videos of themselves. Yeah drinking a grimace shake for a second and then cutting to another scene where they've been like murdered or killed or something. And it just, everybody did their own version of it. I think mostly on TikTok, and it got, I think I read something like it, it received like 5 billion views yeah. impressions. And Starbucks had a similar situation happen where we, we had this thing called the unicorn Frappuccino that just was like massive success. 
but the amount of impressions that this grimace shake got and just the way yeah. it took off i think it was a good example of like what's happening now where you've got this g- new generation of creator consumers and customers that they they want to sort of participate in something and it catches on and kudos to mcdonald's for not shutting it down or whatever or trying to co-opt it in some cheesy un- yeah. inauthentic way so there's a lot to learn from that if you think about what's starting to happen with this new consumer and with these new digital tools yeah i think when you hit one that strikes gold that's super you just but on the other side it could be also devastating right yeah yeah sure yeah i mean you see what happened with bud light recently for example it can go against you real fast it can go for you real fast and sometimes you're involved in it sometimes you're not involved in it. I, yeah. it's just i mean di- to be honest andy and i big part of what we're doing at form three is we're practicing what we preach which is a we're learning and we're experimenting and we're willing to get out there and do things and learn and i think that's a key lesson which is like this is all really hard to figure out and yeah there's there's no playbook exactly so you got to look for these like principles around community and gamification and storytelling and yeah, participation yeah, yeah. like these are the so we're we're trying to help brands think about guiding principles as opposed to specific tactics and then experimentation on top of that and then yeah. that allows brands to sort of be like a startup to kind of build measure learn and iterate yeah. and experiment and i think that's never been more important or we think that's yeah. never been more important yeah it's brand innovation it's what it is. We always talk about product innovation and bringing new products to market. This is brand. It, it sounds to me, I'm what well, I'm going to label it as brand innovation. You re-innovate your brand, disrupt your brand. You could say, I'd be the same brand, right? How you engage with the world out there could be very different, very disruptive. That's cool. That's cool. So I know on the website, you talk about the collective and you talk about the technology platform. Can you just kind of position those for me? So the collective, Form 3 Collective is a group predominantly of VP of marketing of mid-sized to large consumer-facing companies, all of whom want to share best practices of using new technologies for customer acquisition and engagement. So we have two groups. Companies in the groups are everyone from Starbucks, obviously, Anheuser-Busch, Chipotle, so some larger companies. And then we have mid-sized companies like Crumble, Ruby Tuesday, Mod Pizza, just to name a few. Yeah. And, and so these are facilitated conversations by Adam and I with groups, with small groups of people who want to share what's working, what's not. not. A yeah. lot of it's about creating experiments and learning from them. Yeah. So that's the collective. Yeah. That collective is are these small communities and they, that sort of happened organically after we launched the Starbucks, after Starbucks launched Starbucks Odyssey, we had a number of companies approach us seeking advice on at that time Web3, but it's really evolved to Web3 AI and, and Metaverse. And it's really out of that, that the book has come and we're going to be forming an online community. And so that's our yeah. sort of more B2B services people. A number of people have reached out to get time with Adam and I on figuring out how to basically how to transform, digitally transform their companies and their marketing yeah. in, in particular. And so it's that vehicle that we're doing that. And really Hive 3 is, is, a, is a piece of that puzzle as well. Okay. Is, it, is it launched yet? How long has it been in the market? So Hive3.ai is the URL. Anybody can go there. So Great. just... H-I-V-E, the number three dot A-I. You go there, even today, you can see we've run almost 10 different challenges so far, all with mock brands or with some of these AI creator influencers that we partnered up with who are hosting challenges against mock brands. So they're design briefs, but against a fake sneaker company called Solar Sneaks or a fake outdoor athletic leisure wear company yeah. called wild and but now starting with crumble you're going to see us starting to run these co- design competitions with real brands same idea you get a community yeah. of, cre- of ai creators you get a real brand you get a brief and you get ideation and amazing production that comes out of it and storytelling and and some learnings that are happening for everybody so that's what's happening on hive3.ai and it's, it's live and yeah 
having it not just be these design challenges, but we're even having it feel a little bit like a esport or a league in a in a sense, not literally, but like in a sense, we're we're running a we're calling it season one of the challenges, and we're going to keep track of everyone who placed, and we're going to have a playoff bracket at the end of it. So we're not only doing these individual challenges, which are in and of themselves having cash prizes and a lot of fun and a lot of community and a lot of learnings for both the brand and the creator community, but we're also having that sort of build up to a, a playoff bracket at the end. So it's got a little bit of like our own sense of gamification and community meets innovation and brand creativity all at the same time. And it's it's live on hive3.ai. Good. Well, everybody needs to go check that out because that's, that's really cool. If, if people wanted to get to that level of, I want to have that, the learning group, the peer to peer learning group, how would they kind of get to that next engagement with you? Well, they should, first of all, on our site, on high 3ai they can do the, they can fill out the contact us form either in general or under the four brands. That's the best way to get in touch with us. And on that site, they can find our Twitter, they can find our Discord, and they can fill out the contact us form. And that's the best way to, if any brand is interested in joining the collectives or participating in one of our challenges, like we make it really easy on the site for them to uh, let us know and we'll follow up right away. Yeah, great. Let me add my email is Andy at form3.com and Adam's email is Adam at form3.com. Perfect. if you don't want to, t- if you don't want to go anywhere, you just want to. Email Old us. school still works. We'll respond. We'll respond. <laughs> yeah. Email and, and, and no, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> and, and if people are listening uh, as they're doing things, don't worry. All of these links and all this information will be in the show notes, so everybody should check the show notes to make sure they know how to how to follow this. Well, it's been a fun conversation. If you reflect on it. Did we miss something? Is there something you'd want to say, oh, Paul, we should have talked about this or, or we should have covered that? Or did we, did we kind of nail the high points? I think we covered it pretty good. What do you yeah, think, Andy? Yeah. yeah, I think we did too. I mean, the, I mean, I think the only thing that I would, I think we covered this, but that I would add just in the form of emphasis is AI is a tremendous unlock for brands and specifically brand marketing. And everyone sort of views AI, I think, first stop as like a cost reduction, like, oh, it's going to reduce my ability to generate more content as a cost reduction. But we, th- we think the real unlock is the creativity that it presents and the opportunity to move from this transactional to emotional. We're both excited to help these growing brands participate in that, experiment with that, and do it responsibly. Pretty well said. It's hard to hard to hard to hard to say something after that. Well summed up, Andy. Thank uh, you, Paul. Thank you. It was worth beating the drum. There you go. Be sure to contact us, Adam at <laughs> dot com. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's only one email address. <laughs> yeah. When's your book coming out? Yeah, it's actually it's coming out soon. So we're okay. my guess is that on Black Friday, right after Thanksgiving, we're gonna start offering pre sales pre-order ability and we're going to do something really unique with this book we're going to we're going to be putting it out in a serialized fashion so we're going to be writing these chapters putting them out there getting our community of readers to give us feedback on both the chapters we've written as well as what the next where the book should go not totally a choose your own adventure but a little bit and really again trying to practice what we preach creating our own community creating experiences not making it transactional so we're doing the same thing with our book that we're going to do, that we're advising brands to do for themselves. And it starts right after Thanksgiving in 2023. Very nice. Yeah. It's going to be fun. Going to be fun. Everybody should go out and get signed up for that too, because that's going to be a fun journey. Well, I got to thank you both for, for joining today. It's been a fun conversation. And, and Andy, you're sick. You're just recovering. That's not your normal voice. So, But thanks for putting it out there <laughs> today with us. And My really, I wish well, you- Thanks for having us. I wish you both the greatest of success and, and let's stay in touch. And as you have new things, I'd love to help you launch some of your concepts through the, through the podcast here. Great. Great. Thanks, Paul. Yeah, we'll take you up on it. Good. I hope you all enjoyed that. That was a fascinating discussion and there is so much more to do. So do check out Hive3.ai and start learning about this and start thinking about how you can participate. I think you'll like what you see there. I wish you all a great week, everybody. Take care. Bye for now. Thanks for joining us this week for Innovation Talks with Paul Heller. 
If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe on Spotify, Stitcher, Apple, or wherever you listen to podcasts. For additional information on today's topic, check out sophion.com, S-O-P-H-E-O-N.com, where you will find plenty of innovation-centric content and corporate best practices. If you'd like to discuss anything with Paul or would like to get in touch with the show, email us at talks at sophion.com. <laughs>